And, you know, the industry has made a great effort to use antibiotics more responsibly. Um, some have just arbitrarily reduced or eliminated antibiotics. Um, has that opened up the door for mycoplasma? Because it is a bacterial pathogen. I would say we've, we've learned where that organism uh, likes to grow, mm -hmm. and we've, we've learned uh, the length of time that, that these uh, very low prevalence populations will grow that organism. And we've also identified other mycoplasma uh, that are not mycoplasma how pneumonia as a result of the elimination, say, of mycoplasma how pneumonia. We have some populations that are free of mycoplasma how pneumonia. And now as we've done further investigation, find a mycoplasma hyorhinus, for example. Hyorhinus. Hyorhinus. Uh, it's, a, it's a less pathogenic, and it's also in the upper airway. But no doubt it's, it's present, and we can find the pathology. And um, we can establish a control program for that mycoplasma that's very different than mycoplasma how pneumonia. So how does hyorhinus present in comparison to hyo pneumonia? But what I've experienced is, uh, for example, a, a breeding stock gilt population free of mycoplasma how pneumonia. We can find mycoplasma hyorhinus doing absolutely no damage and creating no problem. In those situations, that's an animal that had early recognition of the organism and did not have any significant pathology. At the same time, we have some populations that have very limited exposure to mycoplasma hyorhinus in their development, mm -hmm. and then for either uh, population dynamics or changes in the flow or changes in the uh, density of pigs in a growing environment, we can see an increase in the level of mycoplasma hyorhinus leading to this upper airway infection. They'll even have a, a tearing and a third eyelid get really swollen. Uh, fortunately, we can control it, uh, both with autogenous vaccinations or with, with medications, but we need to recognize there are other uh, disease presentations in these populations. As we've worked to eliminate mycoplasma how pneumonia, there's others out there we need to look at and work on. So to be clear then, as we eliminate mycoplasma high pneumonia, are we opening up the door or making these pigs more susceptible to the high rhinus? I don't believe we are. Okay. They're, they're very different organisms. Yeah. Uh, they, they present in different uh, pathological uh, presentations within the pig, uh, but they can confuse us in our diagnostics and, uh, and also uh, in the presentation, clinical presentation within the pig. So what do you do about high rhinus? We'll medicate. We can, uh, we can control the organism with early medication. Uh, we'll also harvest the organism and the pathologist will help us grow it and put it into a vaccination program that creates that early recognition of the organism. And have you noticed any common denominators in the herds that have had the, the, this, this newer form of, of mycoplasma? Uh, are they certain types of pig flows or different stages of production? There, there are producers in my client base that would say it's irrelevant, it doesn't matter, because we can find it commonly in their diagnostics and it presents with relatively no problems. It's really in those high health populations where we've worked to eliminate other diseases and then we can see it present itself. That's where we've identified it more commonly. And, and I believe we need to work to minimize the impact of that organism.